We're on our way to go car shop. Maybe I just like took one of these uh, just just to put on display. Good morning, everybody. This is gonna be the day of personal car shopping. Something that I needed to do for a whole day now. I sold my S63 last night, and we've got a trunk full of money. We gotta spend it today, and uh, $110,000, sorry, $120,000 is actually not enough money to purchase a new car. So we're gonna need to go to the bank, get more money, and try to find something real nice. But it's a nice addition to what we're gonna use. The only problem is, is it's 9 a.m. in Beverly Hills, and on a Saturday, nothing is open. So we're gonna hit Breakfast Cafe first, and after the Breakfast Cafe, Marshall Goldman Beverly Hills, a place I've been wanting to go to for a very, very long time, is open at 10. All right, so unlike Las Vegas, we have zero parking meters. So I'm getting my third ticket today by this nice young gentleman right here. How much is a parking ticket in Beverly Hills? Sir, can you help me out here? How much is a parking ticket in Beverly Hills? Yes. $25. Oh, uh, correctable. Yes. Okay. Very, very cool. So I live in Las Vegas, so I don't actually, we don't have parking meters. So this is actually a really unique thing for me. And so there's no excuse because I should put money in the thing, but uh, I'm just really curious how much is the parking ticket in Beverly Hills? This one. Not the sightable one, the one I didn't put the meter in. $53 to save, I don't know, 20 bucks or 20 minutes. Anyways. 50 cents? 50 cents or $53? We're on our way to go car shopping. found the exact car that I was looking for uh, on the road over here. The SLS is a car that I think fits a daily driver category, right? If there's anything other than a, like a Mercedes or, you know, a real, see the problem is BMW doesn't make a good daily, they don't make car, they, BMW never made anything like this, right? And they never made anything like a G-Wagon either. They just, they make really cool cars for the masses. But Mercedes just makes these really one-off unique builds that are just, so special and timeless. I mean, this car with gold wing doors is just out of control, you know, and the door handles are like hidden. I, I mean, all of this right here just looks so nice, you know? Let's see, that was locked. But man, it is a beautiful car. Unfortunately, this one sold and I wouldn't even get one with brown interior anyways. So we gotta keep shopping. But up front, they've got, well, this is not a bad option either. Porsche Turbo, I've never owned a Porsche personally for my own self. I mean, I have the GT3 RS for the race, you know, for the rental car company, but Porsche Turbo is a good option, but they're, I don't know, I don't feel like a Porsche brand, it doesn't fit me, right? That's not you. I'm not a Porsche guy, no. right? So if I wore like a tie, maybe I'd be a Porsche guy, you know what I'm saying? Or like if I look like Mario, I'd drive something like this. Uh, the Dawn, the Dawn? The Dawn, I mean, come on. The Dawn, you know, I could be like an Italian gangster if I got a Dawn. Especially, the only problem is it's blue. If this was like white or like something, the orange, this is the Mandarin is what they call this interior. Oh my God. You guys, if you saw this in person, you'd freak out. It's like unbelievable how nice the Mandarin interior is from Rolls Royce. And this has the, uh, the bespoke audio, the really cool, I think it's called Birchwood or something like that. Um, I just don't like the blue on the outside. It doesn't look bad, but blue top, blue car, orange interior. If this was black or white, this would be a huge option for me because a Rolls Royce is really nice. The Dawn's nice. It's got four seats. Um, let's see, no. Cool, very, 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 very cool, but no. Um, another, oh wow, look at this one. They got two of them here. This is nice too, look at this, wow. No, uh, Mercedes, no. <laughs> This is sick. This is the Black Series S65, SL65. Also, this car is sold. This is a super crazy car. I mean, legit, like, this car is probably, you know, I don't really know the specs. Don't hold me to it, but I think this car is probably over 800 horsepower. And uh, this is a car from 
my when I was in high school, this was like a super crazy car that came out and everybody talked so highly of it. It was in the same time as that SLS came out. But you know what? I, I kind of ignoring the elephant in the room here, the F40. If I was a true baller, like the ballerest of all ballers, I would daily drive an F40. I would also have my leg would be like, oh, like this. <laughs> right, like uh, this, is, this is some serious, some serious shit right here. Um, the F40, arguably absolute finest example of Ferrari's engineering and design ever made. I mean, when you talk about a timeless design, if you see an F40 in person, you're just like, yeah, they killed it. They did a great job. And then they built some crap like the California over there, right? So how did they go both ways? They went California and they went F40. Look, that car has its purpose, but this car here, I mean, oh my goodness. I mean, if you guys can see that, there's a couple of turbos strapped to the back of this engine. And I don't know how good this drives because I've only driven one in the parking lot. I've never actually really even been behind the wheel of one in an under boost. This car here is a bucket list car for me for sure. Um, I'm not a fan of the F50. I absolutely love the Enzo, but I truly don't know if those cars are ever gonna, I, I don't think I'll ever be able to buy one. I mean, what would I, I, I would love this. Trust me, I would love this, but what would I do to this car? I could never change it. I could never do anything to it. I could never modify it. I mean, you buy this car and there's a couple thousand F40s. You buy this car, you look at it all day. You put this in the showroom and you're like, yeah, I got an F40. Now this car right here is $1.4 million. Not bad. Now when you're talking about over a million, meh, you know, Bugatti, F40, I'm going with the car I can drive. But this car ever goes into the high teens, right? Like 850s, 8, 900s. Maybe I just like pick one of these up just, just to put on display. I don't know. But I doubt it'll ever go that low because you know we'd have to have some crazy supercar, hypercar recession to get that low. But uh, let me let me let me just show you this car. There is an interesting car. This car here looks insane. Okay, not sure of the year, but uh, it is. Oh, it's a 1990 Countach. This car has less than 150 miles on it. It's brand new. I mean, literally brand new. Uh, I like the ones with no wing. The Countach with a wing, it looks cool, but this one with no wing looks a lot better. What do you think if we got some classic cars to rent? You know, I already have the 355. We could put that in the rental fleet. I mean, I don't know. Maybe someone rents it. You know, I currently have it for sale, but if I sell it to my rental company, that may be an option also. And then we can complement it with maybe a Diablo or a Countach or some classic Porsches. You know, Mr. Fernando's in the house. How are What's you, brother? Up, man? How are you? Very good. I came to see you, like I said. So, oh, we got an angry monster. I'm going after you too. See, they always—they're always scared when you go after them. All right, brother. We can go 2020 Bentley. This is not a 2020 Bentley. Don't think I'm a crazy idiot. This is not 2020. Just I was thinking about the new 2020 Bentley because it's a new thing and it's out right now. Uh, we can go Aston Martin, which would be a terrible idea. Or I could go like straight Mulsanne and uh, go with a classic Bentley. Now, this is a very poor example of it because if you get like a speed, they're pretty sick. And these cars here, I don't know what the, the price is on this one right here, but this car is about $90,000 now, 85, 90,000 for a regular spec, you know, black on black or something along those lines. Um, this is not a bad option, but I just don't want something uh, the same, right? I love this. I absolutely love the 550. And me and Robson last night had an argument of what car was from 1995 to basically the 599. And it was the 550 and the 575 Maranello. And uh, this is a paddle shift car but the majority of 550s and 575s came with a six-speed manual. So that's pretty cool. Uh, this looks like a classic uh, DB7 Zagato or something, DB something Zagato, and look at that. V12, six-speed, beautiful. Um, oh, this one, listen, I'm telling you right now, okay? See GT Vantage, this is probably a V8, but look, these cars come six-speed V12 for $50,000, Robson. No way. You're getting these for 50, 60,000 bucks in a six speed, okay? Six speed V12, or even the V8 is amazing. 
The V8 is a variant of um, uh, like a Ford kind of sounding motor. I'm not exactly sure where the car motor came from because Ford at one point did own Aston Martin, so it might be from there. But man, look at this car. Obviously, Henrik Fisker designed this car. It's an amazing machine. I would never go with a McLaren. That would be a bad idea. Uh, definitely not in California. Um, Porsche Turbo, probably not. I don't really like the Porsches. I've already got a 355. We just bought the Bravis G-Wagon, okay? So we're not going there. Look, 599? Oh man, what about this? Wait, hold on. I didn't even see this. The Senna, purple. Should we match? It's not, a, it's not a really matchy matchy, but. The purple carbon is the Purple. Yeah. <laughs> they got the window cracked for me. <laughs> Look at that. Okay, you need some air? Here's your, here's your window. Wow, look at how beautiful this is. The purple carbon. Okay, red carbon, disgusting, right? Okay, blue carbon, eh, not the best. Purple carbon looks great because it's so dark. It looks so nice. It complements the car very, very well. This is an MSO heavy car. You can definitely tell. Um, I've uh, been in a couple Senna's and I do like them. I like the purple carbon seat. This is probably a 1.1, 1.2 million dollar spec. And I would assume because of how cool this car is, they're asking over MSRP, which Senna market is not going over MSRP anymore. Um, because the speed tail is coming, every Senna owner in the world needs to pay for their speed tail. So <laughs> Senna's are like, oh, get rid of the Senna, get rid of the Senna. Let me get my speed tail, I gotta pay for that. So Senna's are dropping like rocks and I'm, I'm probably here to pick up a Senna soon. I mean, I don't like McLarens as much as anybody, but you know, at the same time, you can't doubt the look of this Senna. I mean, when you see this thing on the road, the road presence of a Senna is astro I mean, freaking ridiculous. But the only problem is, is that we need to figure out how to get rid of this thing. Wing delete, okay? Hear me out. Wing delete on the Senna. I'm gonna be the only one. I don't know if it's even possible, but I'll figure it out, okay? I'll just, <laughs> everything is possible. Might have some lights on the dash, but every single thing is possible. Okay. Uh, enough talking about stuff in the showroom. We've got to find something special. We've got to find something that really fits me. Really, really fits me.